you so much for staying with us. Our hashtag this evening is one on one. We continue to have conversations with persons of interest and my person of interest this evening is Roshan Nara Ibrahim. She's a beauty queen. Wave to I don't know how you guys do it. <laughs> <laughs> so Roshan Nara was um, in July stripped of her title Miss World Kenya 2016 but she has refused to go down without putting up a spirited fight to reclaim her crown. The title has since been passed on to Miss World Kenya 2016 first runners-up Evelyn Jambi. Uh, and this continues to be a bone of contention with Russia Nara here, who claims hers is a case of unfair dismissal. The Miss World 2016 competition has attracted beauty queens from over 130 countries and it will be held in the capital Washington District of Columbia on the 20th of December this year. Uh, the crown has previously been won by an African country on five occasions, that is Egypt in 1954, South Africa in 1958, 1974, 2014, what is up with the South Africans, mm -hmm. and then Nigeria in 2001. So without um, going too much into you know, issues um, surrounding the Miss World pageant, I want to talk to you, Roshanara. Um, you were stripped of your title um, in what was cited as breach of conduct. Did you conduct yourself in a manner that was not befitting of a beauty queen, would you say? Um, my comment on the breach of contract is that I carried out my responsibility to the best of my knowledge. I always did carry myself very well. Um, I indulged in all sorts of um, different charities and I tried to give back to society in the best possible way that I could. Um, so if you ask me directly whether I breached any code of conduct, then my answer would be no. Okay. Um, I want to take you back to boot camp um, as the pageants are going on because I assume there's a top 10 that is shortlisted. Are you taken through um, a code of conduct? Are you told how you should conduct yourself away from, I mean, your private life per se, as you carry the title, are you taken through what you should and should not do, where you should be seen, where you should not be seen? Um, there's no specific code of conduct as such. There's no contract that's read out to you that says specifically you can go here, you can't go there, you can see this person, you can't. Um, there's no rule up front that is um, shown to us or um, given to us, but it's usually just general um, etiquette that you have to abide by. You have to dress decently because at the end of the day you're a beauty queen, you're expected to be an example to younger children. Um, so it's basically just general upkeep. You have to carry yourself very well and um, I think the only rule that Miss World has officially that I know of is that you have to be a Miss which means you cannot be married and I think for obvious reasons you can't be pregnant either. Okay. Um, so let's go back to when it came to the knowledge of the media that mm -hmm. Russia Nara here had been stripped of her title as Miss World Kenya 2016. How was this information made known to you? Was this communicated to you? Like, was there a communique where you called by the franchise holders and told you're no longer Miss World Kenya? How did you get this information? Um, yes, I was called um, in the evening at about 8 o'clock and it was just said to me you're no longer Miss Kenya and um, before then I had a chance to stand up for myself or defend myself or even argue the fact that I was dethroned um, the next morning it was in the media mm -hmm. so there was no fair, fair hearing as such I wasn't really given any option in the matter and it was just boom <laughs> So through the Were you given a chance to defend yourself though? No, I wasn't. Okay. So uh, that happened. Um, I mean, the reason why I'm coming, uh, I'm asking that is because the stripping allegedly, and this is quote unquote Roshanara, mm -hmm. came in the wake of allegations that he had been linked to romantic involvement mm -hmm. uh, with somebody, a person of interest, okay. uh, a high profile individual, and that is what the franchise holders felt um, was a breach of conduct. How true is that? That's absolute nonsense. Um, sorry to be so blunt. Um, in fact, I, I remember this evening very, very well. I was at home watching television and one of my friends from my university called and said, Rosh, there's, um, there's an article about you on the internet. I'll send you the link, look at it and, you know, 
tell us what you think. And so I opened um, the link that was sent to me and um, the article was by a blogger unknown to me and the allegations basically they were saying that um, I was dating Moses Kuria and that he had taken me to Dubai and <laughs> bought me a car and a lavish house and this was very funny to me because actually um, I'd never heard of this person before this date. Um, I'm not very um, politically interested really and um, so then I asked the question who is this Moses Kuria and then I googled and I found out and I laughed and I you know it was very funny so when I asked for advice um, about whether I should address these rumors or whether I should keep quiet I was told to keep quiet and that eventually they would blow over mm -hmm. to keep quiet about the rumors yes not to address them at all because it would give it more um, traction mm -hmm. So I did keep quiet and the rumors blew up even further because more and more blog posts kept uh, picking up this mm -hmm. story. So you have been a victim of cyberbullying to some extent, I okay. think. So, so um, you chose to keep quiet about the rumors. Did you also choose to keep quiet about the dethroning, about being stripped of your title? Did you think that with time that perhaps the controversy would die down and you would be given your crown back? How did you handle that issue? Um, no. So. After this, um, after the whole Moses Courier story, I was called to the office one day and um, I was told to put my sash and crown on the table and I was threatened um, to be dethroned. And then after that, uh, the office asked me to basically get in touch with all media houses on my own and um, basically refute those allegations and clear my name. Mm -hmm. And yeah, after that was done, then everything sailed smoothly but after this um, dethronement um, I refused to take it lying down um, and I have proceeded to go into court okay. with how everything turned out okay so without getting into um, into 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 your decision to go to court now mm -hmm. I want to talk about um, you being at this high point in your life being crowned beauty queen out of how many other contenders 46 I think 46 46 and you're yes. the 47th and you being crowned as Miss World Kenya and then you know unceremoniously being stripped of this title mm -hmm. what are you feeling at that time what was your reaction when they told you that uh, give us your sash and your crown um, it's very disappointing to say the least because um, this has been something that I have wanted ever since I was a little girl I think from the time that I was about five six years old um, this is an ambition that I always had um, first and foremost to become an international model and on top of being a, of just being a model I wanted to become Miss World and for this opportunity to have been taken away from me um, to be able to compete on the world stage is disappointing to say the least mm -hmm. and unfair okay and so why did you join the pageant I think these are some of the questions that you guys are asked up there yes. I, mean, I don't know you're strong I don't I don't know how you guys do it but why did you join the pageant why season? I joined the pageant because first and foremost it's 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 a humongous platform for a woman to get to the Miss World title even then just for the Miss Kenya title it's a platform where you're recognized um, as a beauty queen and also you're given a lot of responsibility um, to give back to society to give back to communities and um, I'm very passionate about that and I felt that honestly that was the best way mm -hmm. forward for me mm -hmm. and um, so now we, we get into your private life actually affecting um, your title what sacrifices did you have to make to join this pageant uh, did I make any sacrifices? <laughs> could be school. Could um, be no, law school. Um, very oh, luckily. you're in law school? Yes, I'm in law Where? school. University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. um, but luckily for me, what happened was the first three months of Miss Kenya, I hadn't heard from the office at all. So there were no responsibilities as such, as a, I mean, other than the ones that I gave myself um, to work with different charities to make the most of my crown. Um, so during those first three months I was lucky enough to be able to finish with mm -hmm. um, law school and now I'm waiting to graduate okay so I didn't get in the way of and no wonder <laughs> you ta you've chosen to take legal recourse and, and 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 I want to talk about if you had to do this differently um, mm -hmm. you know just being thrust out there social media everybody talking about you um, you being this beauty queen that has now been stripped of her title if you had to do this differently would you even attempt have you would even have attempted to take this particular route um, I have no regrets 
and I believe that God has a reason for everything that happens. Um, there is a purpose for everything that happens and I appreciate that this is my journey and this is where I've gotten so far and I refuse to believe that it goes downhill from here. Mm -hmm. I am working hard to make sure that um, things work out and I have full faith that they will. Okay, so I mean this probably has left a very sour taste. So supposing things worked in your favor and you got the crown back, would you embrace it wholeheartedly? Is it something that you'd be like just happy to, to, to wear ever again? I think that's been tainted. Um, really, unfortunately, it has been tainted. Um, and for me, I think the disappointment not only started after the dethronement, the, de the, the disappointment started after being crowned in the first place because I realized that and I'm sh I feel this pain for a lot of girls out there that the crown is not really what it's deemed to be unfortunately for Kenya I'm sure it's very different in different countries and the opportunities given to these girls are much better but in Kenya I believe it's very corrupt and instead of giving girls opportunities it actually silences them and it's sad why do you say it's, it's very why sad. do you say it's corrupt um, because um, so I'm sure for most aspiring young girls, including myself, I believe that um, by winning the Miss Kenya title, you'd change your life, um, that you would have a big platform, resources, um, considering the fact that you're now standing up for your country on an international platform, that you would have the support of your country and that you would have the resources and be backed up. Unfortunately, the case is that you're given a national title which you have to retain and work for on your own. So you're basically freelancing a national title, which is extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. There's nothing easy about it. It's very tasking and it's difficult. It's difficult. It's very difficult. Um, but then I know you were very actively involved in the SMILE, in the in smile, a smile train campaign. campaign. Yes, the SMILE train. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. That gave me a lot of joy. That was actually one of um, the most exciting projects I've ever done. It gave me a lot of life purpose. What was it about? Um, we were giving children with um, cleft lip free surgeries. So that is was this your amazing. own initiative, or the, is this um, is this is this pushed on you by the franchise holders? Um, so it started with Aida Nguma, Miss 2014, and um, she began work with Smile Train, and um, then it went over to Charity Mwangi, who is mm -hmm. Miss 2015, and then on to me. Okay. And yeah. So despite so uh, being stripped of this title, which you say in your eyes is now tainted, mm -hmm. do you think that you now have skills, having gone through this experience, that can help you uh, give back to society in any way? Do you plan to? Um, do I plan to give back to society? Of course. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my life mission. I've always tried to give back to society ever since I was younger. I used to do a lot of charity work and that for me will never end. Mm -hmm. Crown or no crown. And as we begin to, to, to wind up, I'm just curious if, uh, I mean, you were crowned Miss World Kenya 2016. What do you think convinced the judges that you deserved that title? I've been asking that question. Actually, I'd love to hear from the judges why they selected me. Um, but it's something that I really wanted. Um, I believe I was extremely passionate about it. I'm sure it. they ask you, Roshanara, <laughs> why do you, why do you think, think you, you deserve, deserve this title? <laughs> because I'm extremely passionate, extremely driven, extremely ambitious, and I give back. Mm -hmm. um, this was a platform for me to be able to make change um, on whatever capacity that I could. And I believed that I won Miss Kenya because they could see the drive and potential in me. Yeah, and the beauty. So oh, describe... Thank you. <laughs> well, actually, how, how tall are you? I'm 5'9". Five 5'9". Nine. Five nine. Five nine. Okay. So describe beauty um, as we close, um, because a lot of people see the physical beauty, mm -hmm. but describe beauty or a beauty queen to that young girl, that aspiring model, um, that person that looks up to you as a mentor, as a very inspiring personality. Describe beauty. Beauty um, is in the eye of the beholder. Beauty comes from within. It's not just about how you look, it's about how you act, it's about how you feel about others, it's about the energy that, that you, you emanate, it's about the light that comes from within. And you cannot be a beautiful person if you're ugly and black from the inside. You have to be giving, you have to be a nice person. You have to be good and that takes work. Thank you so <laughs> much. We've been talking to Roshanara Ibrahim. She is Miss World Kenya 2016 and you know what they say, once a beauty queen, always a beauty <laughs> queen. <so. laughs>
um, they all the take best. That away from yeah, me. they can <laughs> take that away from you. Um, and uh, as we close the floor, Africa, let's worship 12th edition in Nairobi. Uh, the focus is uniting in worship through music and prayer for the nations of Africa. Since 2004, there are over 300 churches represented in the event, attracting worship leaders, pastors, and about 20,000 participants per event. That's the event going down currently as we speak, and it will come live to you after 10 over 10. Um, so stay here with Citizen TV. That is a flow at the Winners Chapel on Mombasa Road. If you're I mean, if you don't have a plan tonight, you might as well head down there. Um, that's what's happening at a flare. Well, a lot of praise and worship and people just celebrating um, their faith. Um, and that's what's happening. We're going to be crossing over to 10 over 10 with Joy Mothangi and Willis Raburu shortly. I'm hanging out with Roshanara Ibrahim, <laughs> uh, Miss World Kenya 2016. <laughs> Johnny, say <a> good night. <laughs> it was a pleasure being here with you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for having uh, for having me here. I feel very honored. Thank all you. All the best. All the best. <laughs> Thanks night. for watching. That's all the time we had. Good night.